So this is Tarja, our guest, <laughs> and she's like a really strong female in the tech industry, in the game industry, and she's a working director at the Global Game Jam. She's also a DB manager for Digs, and she has been all over the game industry. I keep following you on LinkedIn, and I always see you as like, I got this, I do this, I'm participating in this conference and you know it's a very inspiration to me, you know, I work in the game industry too and I assume that a lot of women as well. So I mean we can start with you Tar just telling a little bit everyone about your background and yeah, welcoming you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me, first of all. Like I, I told behind the scenes, just that I've been teaching kids, like game de game development for kids from, I guess they are like from 12 to 15 years old. Yes, because from sixth grade to nine, ninth grade. Right. So I feel like a bit exhausted, but it's fine. I'm happy because it's weekend coming and yeah. I can play games finally, because I feel like I have no time to play games because I'm working all the time. Yeah. So yay, it's fine. So yes, I'm Tarja Porka Kontori, and I feel like people maybe are getting sick of seeing me everywhere because I've been <laughs> doing a lot of stuff lately. But it's I don't know, it's been so cool to be invited to places finally. Like to yeah. be heard and not only heard but also listened. Like yeah. I feel that people are really wanting to know what i have to say and it's been awesome because that way i can i believe that i can make even this like tiniest difference in this games industry spaces mm -hmm. like that much needed difference like at least be part of that change curious about your wow. your your journey you know in the game industry um you know i took a look at your linkedin and i was wondering like what made you first get into game development oh um <laughs> it's kind of yeah i guess my story isn't the most usual i think oh we have many people who didn't have so traditional so to say way to games industry but um like myself i was first doing handicrafts like i was i think it's carpenter like i was doing i was cabinet maker mm. and i was fixing cars at some point as well wow but and that was like cabinet making was supposed to be my carry uh -huh. but then i like my i'm chronically ill with disabled status been for like 15 years or so oh, really? So, like, they found that I have uh, this, like, really serious heart condition, which is under control, and I'm getting treatment, and thank God in Finland we have those things kind of nicely arranged. Yeah. But uh, that affects the way that I have to rethink things, because I have pacemaker for my heart, mm -hmm. so I can't do certain things. I can't, for example, uh, use some power tools right i yeah. would have had to use if i would have been carpenter mm. so i had to kind of like stop and rethink everything and at that point like 10 years ago or so i was so ill actually that i had to like quit working and studying and everything i was doing i had two kids well now already like 15 and 21 so they don't need me that much anymore <laughs> but <laughs> at that time like kids were small and my life went completely like yeah upside down so i was so wow. ill with my chronic illness that i had to stay on disability pension wow. and i was on disability pension for over 12 years i can't even remember wow. but mm -hmm. i spent really long time without basically doing anything that's so interesting and then you found that game industry was that the environment where you could uh, fit in somehow <laughs> yeah that. yeah it, it was interesting because mm -hmm. i played a lot of games like when i was mm -hmm. sick and i couldn't leave home and like i spent a lot of time just like 
basically lying in bed and playing games because I couldn't like physically do anything. Right. So it's been, I don't know. I was interested always in stories and how the games are made. Like mm -hmm. what, like what kind of people are making this, why they are making these decisions when they are making games. And mm -hmm. I was really interested in that aspect as well. Yeah. And of course, games as entertainment purely, they are just awesome. That's yeah. it. Like, that was the main point what draw me into games because they are just cool and they are fun. So, That's so interesting. Yeah. But they also like they helped me yeah. so greatly. The like they helped me with, uh, like, physically first of all, I was oh. able to like practice some kind of like motoristic things. Right. I had problems with because I had um. I don't know them. Like I'm not quite sure about the English term for it, but <laughs> it's okay. I'm also oh my goodness. Language. I'm from yeah. I, I, I <laughs> forgot the word for it, but like I had. Anyways, I had problems with my like motoristic uh, functions yeah. in my hands and so on, and my like eyesight and. But that's wow. all that has recovered now. Mm -hmm. Thank but um, so games helped me with that. And then mentally, like Men when I started to get like really depressed and anxious because I was ill, mm -hmm. physically ill, games helped me to kind of like, like I like to say that I don't escape to games, yeah. but I join to other people. Like I found friends and mm -hmm. um, got a place to belong wow. within games. And then I started to write about games, like those like short news stories in this, we have Consoli Finn, like Finnish uh, hobbyist uh, games journalism website. And I had some people I knew from there, or my sister knew better. Mm -hmm. And she told me like, she just sent me a message one night that uh, like, Tarja, you should actually, <laughs> you, you should write this like you like games so much and you yeah. know about that stuff you should write them definitely um, game is like very family focus if you think about it it's a you know it's a, i mean i grew up eating, like playing nintendo and and it was always yeah. like a special time with my family and you know i know that you know the fact that being a mom is one of the most important job ever so it's a really good connection to have with your kids you know being able to play games with their kids you and know? we still play together a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah like, it's like my oldest older one yeah my older mm -hmm. one lives uh, almost 600 kilometers away so we play league of legends and rage oh, yeah. together to eat others not to uh, cool. like other players yeah. but it's, <laughs> it's the best way like it's so like <laughs> I, I don't know i think it's the best way to keep in touch like it's casual yeah. but then we can just like chat about some serious stuff at Definitely. the same time or if we feel like not talking at all then we just play yep. and chill so and yeah. that that the drive of playing video games made you kind of learn to get into the development industry and like game industry right now currently is that is that kind of the inspiration behind it yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then there was this thing also that like we had some we had to tear our house down because it had some mold and other problems and like life felt really hard like mm -hmm. five or six years ago or is it already seven i don't know what time is because pandemic is just messing yeah. our heads <laughs> took two years so <laughs> So I I was thinking that, okay, I, ha I have to do something. Because I've been, all this time that I was on disability pension as well, I kept studying, like mm -hmm. online, just, yeah. just on my own. I studied Arabic and I studied some coding and I studied political history and all kind of like, uh, I guess I had this like tiny, like hope still yeah. that maybe one day, I could be able to work again. Like, mm -hmm. I think I didn't really believe it, but I had that hope. I yeah. I wished for it. Yeah. And here I am now. So I'm happy I kept studying and doing, like, um, improving myself during those years that. and not just, like, 
yeah, leave I everything. That. It's like crazy how the the previous person that I interviewed um, too. So it's crazy that that he got into the game development industry, like using Hyperpad to help with uh, you know making games. And it's crazy that 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 can be useful for for like people with disabilities. Like it's amazing that yeah, can help you definitely in helping a lot of people out there. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to yeah. hear your experience. Um, you know, as a woman in the game industry and tech industry, um, you know, how how has it been for you? You know, I, I interview a few like women in the tech industry, but I would love to hear your your story. <laughs> Well, I do a lot of like diversity, equity, inclusion work, uh -huh. but like, I think it's kind of, I, I wouldn't say funny, but I don't know any other word for it. Because I grew up here, like I live in Northern Finland in really little village. I live right. in middle of nowhere, basically. Mm -hmm. It's just snow and bunnies and birds and that's amazing yeah. but we have internet <laughs> so like <laughs> yeah we have internet so now so i have access to uh -huh. all the world basically so like because i lived here like all my life wow. and my parents like especially my father he's been always and my mother like both of them and my sister or maybe like all i've ever known they never like told me or made me feel that I couldn't do something just because I'm a girl. Uh -huh. Like I was, I felt always that I'm, right. I'm as capable and as equal. And there was no like this kind of, yeah. that you have to do this because you're a boy or you have to do, do this because you're a girl. So uh -huh. it, it, it is something I kind of learned just like when I was adult already that yeah. okay people are really thinking that like for example gaming would be only for boys oh yeah because i like it didn't fit to my reality that yeah. i had grown up in yeah. so it's kind of that mm -hmm. way i didn't have like i don't have that package or i don't have any kind of uh, like mild trauma Related okay, to that. that's amazing. So I, I guess that's one thing why I feel so somehow strong, and uh -huh. I feel like I want to speak for others and echo their no, not speak for <laughs> others maybe I, but echo their voices and like help to others to be heard, those that didn't have it so well, because of course now that I've been working like in more visible positions, yeah, in the games industry, I get some of like yeah uh, go to kitchen and well, this honestly, basic like, <laughs> it's like i mean i grew up in a very sexist society like I, in south america so it's like we were never invited to play video games with guys like you know what i mean so and it's just never was never really like motivation even when you're thinking about engineering like never really motivated me to kind of go to software engineering kind of like you know, do anything. This has always has been a very male dominant industry. Uh, and I see this here in North America too, because I'm currently living in Canada. And then I see quite a bit, you know, of like, you know, sexism here as well. So, and I got to listen to a few podcasts about women in the game industry and in the workplace. And I know that, that, you know, we struggle a lot, especially when we're dealing with a very male dominant kind of work environment. It's like almost like we have to stop being ourselves, making ourselves being less, so they can adapt to us, kind of thing. You know, that's why I ask. Because yeah, <laughs> and and that's true what you are saying. Like yeah. it definitely is a problem. Yeah. And of course, like here in Finland, this part I like to think that yeah, we have things quite well, but they are mm -hmm. still like we are behind yeah. as well in that mm -hmm. sense because women. One thing I want to always do whatever whatever i'm working on is that i would like I, I want to tell other women that um they don't have to be afraid like mm -hmm. it's fine like not all are going to like you anyway like it doesn't matter how like you can be the kindest and the best and the 
most wonderful and perfect person mm -hmm. on earth and then there's still someone who just hates you yeah just for the sake of hating like it won't change it's you can't affect that <laughs> yeah so like you just have to just do you if yeah. you enjoy what you're doing if you want to if you want to be in the games industry just go yeah. for it and i think you kind of answered my next question because i wanted but you can also go deep into that like i wanted to ask you if you have like a, a specific advice for you know girls and women out there that want to be in the game industry i mean you already said something but if you have anything else yeah yeah it's gonna no one thing i when i like those friday game development clubs i'm teaching for kids there's some girls and what i want them to understand and kind of somehow take as part of the thinking that this part we are talking about tech and games industry it's not all about coding and all about like this um yeah. like ones and zeros and yeah <laughs> there is a lot of like creativity you can you can use the talent and passions you have like you yeah. don't have to want to be coding 24 7. Mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. be artistic you can be a storyteller you can be yeah a product on production side yeah or like like for example myself i studied coding because i had to study it mm -hmm. in my like it's, it was part of my university studies oh, wow. And okay, I liked it, yes, uh, to some extent, but I didn't fall in love with it. It wasn't yeah. something like I would see myself doing daily. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love to meet people and I, like meet. I say meet because now I can do it like online. I yeah. still, we have pandemic going on. It's worse than ever, at least here yeah. in Finland. And like i'm just home all the time yeah but still i'm i'm connected to global to everyone like yeah. network yeah. because of the internet i just i just love it crazy so I, yeah keep going yeah sorry so, yeah, no, just that there's like there's so many possibilities and so many opportunities mm -hmm. in the games industry there's mm -hmm. community side there's pr and marketing there's like all kind of roles. Yeah. Like you mm -hmm. just pick the one you love and start sure. to improve like, yourself with it. I, were you talking about like um, myself right now? I, I don't I'm, I don't come from a software background, but I work in marketing and I work for a game industry, a game development industry that make games without the need of coding. So you yeah. really don't need to code it, definitely. Yeah, and that's something like with hyperpad i yeah. want to say that it's something like i really want to introduce to mm -hmm. my those students as well because mm -hmm. there's many children who like they really love the idea of game the game development but still they have this fear that what if i'm not interested in coding and what if i don't like like maths or like it's still seen like re really technical definitely but i try to kind of bring that uh, yeah <laughs> word that's, so out that is, uh... that's amazing because like honestly if i had you know those kind of teachers back then maybe i would like math like you know what i mean but back in mm -hmm. my old times we just had papers and pencils like we didn't, <laughs> we didn't we had the creativity in math and nowadays you can be creative you know with this kind of software and this kind of teachings, like you can be like, you can be anything. And even in the game industry, it amazes me because, you know, I've been working for, in the game industry for like one year so far. And mm -hmm. I, it's amazing to see the, the different roles, like people that they create stories, people that make games. And even in the hyperpack community, we have so many artists that they, they make like amazing, like game characters, gifts and like, um, like you know just like so the visualization is kind of a weird but also really cool too you know mm -hmm. like they, they implement their own personality into their game so that's really cool it makes me really happy excited to see that yeah and that's one thing why why i always say that there is, there is place for everyone 
his body mm-hmm. might think that I hesitate to fit in. Like, is it really like what if what if uh, games industry folks don't welcome you? I have that I have that fear as well. Especially like I was really afraid, kind of to. It's kind of stupid now that I think of it, but at that time, I was worried because I wear hijab. That oh. what people will say, like mm-hmm. because my name kind of doesn't give it maybe out. My name is like basic Scandinavian or like it's Finnish, Russian, that kind of like yeah. European. Bit like Eastern that, European name. Mm-hmm. You brought it back a new topic that I wanted to talk about. Like, what do you think about representation in the game industry? Because you're talking about you wearing the hijab, like, and you being a woman. Like, how do you think that the game industry can influence the next generation in terms of representation of diversity? Yeah, it's it's everything. It's mm-hmm. everything because, like I told earlier, that. Like in my childhood, I didn't like, I lived in that kind of reality where everyone is equal. And yeah. for me, it was quite a shock, kind yeah. of, when I, I realized that, okay, like this isn't how the world works, that yeah. I was so safeguarded and, yeah, yeah. like the ugly truth of how things yeah. really are when mm-hmm. I realized that. So, and how we can combat that kind of, because I think that if we think about all these problems people are hating on um, different kind of people, let's say it that way, yeah. like any kind of different kind of people, it usually comes from some kind of fears maybe or yeah. that we don't know enough about the matter. Like yeah. we are a bit like we have fears because we don't know what's going on, like what kind of that person might be because they are different from me. Yeah. And only the way we can combat that one is to be there, like be visible yeah. and be loud. And I'm not saying be loud in the like like in a nice way be loud yeah like just like be yourself and yeah be, be proudly yourself yeah like don't don't feel need to hide yeah. because there's no need to hide for sure and it is of course it is rough it can mm-hmm. be extremely hard and i know that some people haven't been wanting to work with me just because i'm muslim what? But it's just like crazy. I'm not like I don't get sad or I don't know. I just think that it's their loss. Like yeah, I just hope that they one day they understand like what they are. They are people who want to be working only with people who look like them or yeah. act like them. Um they are missing out a lot because Definitely. Uh, one thing with, if you think about gaming st- game studios, uh, the more diverse your studio is, the more diverse your games will be, and the more diverse your player base will be, yeah. and that gives you more money. Yeah, like <laughs> that's mm-hmm. something. Like if you don't care about anything else, care about that then, and yeah. we bring the like, we bring our representation and our like personalities and teach the world that everyone can be equal Mm -hmm. and we have like people have so lot to offer minorities have so lot to offer and it's it's a stump to neglect all the talent that Mm -hmm. is lying around there yeah, I agree. And not only that, I think that also when the more diversity you have in your game as well, the the more fun the game will be, you know, because like you'll be you can kind of yep. bring your culture, you can bring your personality into it. And when you have even a cooperation as well, like um, I've worked in places where 
I was the only one international and I felt very isolated. You know what I mean? I felt like my voice wasn't heard and it feels mm. really, really bad. And I also feel had to think the same way as you because it's literally a loss because like they're missing out on opportunity to kind of learn about super cool culture and be friends. Yeah. With us, you know what I mean? So it's like we know what matters is like we know who we are and and that we we have to really kind of have self love in this term, in this because otherwise people are gonna kind of like can take you down right so especially being yeah, an international woman like with like culture like religion different religions I'm a Baha'i I grew up in in Brazil a very Christian country mm-hmm. so it's uh I did suffer a lot of kind of you know bullying because I, my religion was different than others yeah. so I I understand how that feels it doesn't feel really nice but, and yeah. then there's other things like age, for example. Mm-hmm. Age is something um, when we have, like, diversity comes in so many forms. Yeah. And health, like myself, I always really openly talk about my health issues because I, I'm sure that all of us suffer See, yeah. some way in this life. Yeah. Hopefully less and more but uh, still everyone is suffer- suffering or battling with something yeah. and I understand that it can be hard to talk about but for me it's not like sensitive subject so I like to talk about it because I believe that when people understand that there there is possibility to like print to bring together your like gotta well, I have to first say that, like with chronic, chronically ill people like myself, we often gotta uh, develop some kind of chronic ill person I- identity, oh. and then you start to think that okay, I can I can't do anything because I have this right. and this issue, and yeah, I can't, and I, I don't want to plan future and so on. But yeah. when I gotta just forgot that and was like okay i have my place i can talk about these things maybe i can help someone else to be brave enough to just start their career as well like Mm -hmm. i did because i got a lot of support at the start of my career and thank you osama dorias for example he was really supportive and telling me like just keep your head high and just be yourself go for it and just don't listen to anyone and yeah like listen like try to find what your heart says and then take a bit of your mind Mm -hmm. as well and put them together and just go for it and do your job and yeah it was the i'm not sure if he understands how big meaning his word Mm -hmm. actually like had because it Mm -hmm. helped me to make the decision to First of all, apply to study game development and then to just go for the job offers. And it's never too late, so, right? I always try to tell. It's never my too mom, late. Yeah. I try to tell like everyone. So it's like people, you know, my age, like I'm, I'm 23. They're like, oh, I'm too old, and I'm like, no, you're no. Not. God, and please, then my mom no. is like, I'm too old, and I'm like, no, you're not. There's always time. You can yeah. always study and apply right if you don't apply you're never gonna get the job if you don't it's make game you're never gonna make a game right so it's like yeah just try yep. I'm, ter- I'm 39 <laughs> now and i was it's been i don't know like oh, yeah. be- before pandemic when i really like my hurry kicked off mm-hmm. like truly so yeah it really isn't you can change your whole like i wasn't like okay i maybe dreamed a bit when i was like younger that I would someday work in the games industry. Yeah. But that wasn't really any kind of goal of mine. Right. My sister works in tech as well. She's my like my big sister and she's been so supportive. And um I love her so much. Uh it's been so supportive and always telling me that you can do it and no matter like what kind of problem I have problems I had with my like health. I've yeah. been in really bad shape and through many surgeries and she's been always there for me. 
and I'm telling that you can do it. You have this in you. And now that I've been talking a lot about my like health problems in mm -hmm. conferences as well, like when I'm talking, I'm talking about business, but then I just oh. might mention that yeah, and I'm also chronically ill, and it affects my life this and this way. And right. Because you, um, you're a human being and you're saying that you're not a robot. Yeah, like we aren't robots. <laughs> it's really dangerous. Like nowadays in social media, for example, we are presented like we would be some kind of perfect robots. Everyone has this perfect... <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Uh, <laughs> life, Instagram life. Guy. Yeah. So like it's... I am a positive person in that sense that I I tend to think the best of everything. Because that's right. how, like, that's just, I don't know, it's built-in thing yeah. in me that I, I try to find the good sides of things. Because what's yeah. the point otherwise? Like, there's no point in dwelling in all the misery and going through mm. all the negative thoughts in your head. Like, I just... For sure. Mm -hmm. I know it's not easy to think positive, yeah. And I, I'm not positive always. Yeah. I have my days when I really just want to quit everything and yeah. like just yeah. go under blankets and never to try anything again. Yeah. And but mm -hmm. that's life. It's just normal. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want like what we are doing with Dick's uh, International Game Summit on Mental he Health Awareness. Wow. It's one of my favorite projects because um, with uh, Mark Chandler. We are planning for like this autumn a new event as well. It was amazing. And we have talking about it. <laughs> yeah, there's like this industry professional, like high end sure. professionals, those heavy hitters of game industry, and they are telling like really personal, like they are going vulnerable. They are being really open. They are telling so like personal sensitive things about their own mental health and their struggles related to work and related to personal life mm -hmm. and how those like go together yes. and it's and so it's important format because it shows people that like even their idols like people tend to idolize those who are making their favorite games AAA titles and so on yeah. so like those people, they are just normal people like you and me, and yeah. they have their problems. And it's extremely important, and it's super beautiful and awesome that those people are sharing their stories. Yeah. Uh, one second, and I just have to charge my computer. Yeah. But the other question is, you, I think it's like you brought it back that point about conferences. I wanted to. I see that you participate in a lot of events, a lot of conferences, and I would love to hear. What has been your favorite kind of conference event so far? Oh, oh my goodness. It's, I guess all the conferences and events I've been in, they all have their own like highlights. I haven't been like in any bad events that I gotta say. Like there wasn't any kind of any events that I would have hated or disliked even but i think of course glo global game jam is always something really empowering and cool because it brings together people from so many countries like literally all over the world so uh, so it's of course the, the global game jam i'm like really curious because like i i started hearing about it last year when i started doing research in the game industry so just wondering how did you first yeah. hear about the Global Game Jam? I was jammer myself. I took part as a jammer to Global ah, Game Jam. Sure. And I actually, my first uh, first Global Game Jam was when I had no idea what I was doing. Like I just went in. I thought, that, okay, this is so cool. I want to meet people. I want to meet people who love to make games. Uh, so what can I do? I knew a bit like how to make some music on PC. So yeah. I just hopped in and asked that, does anyone need game sounds? Yeah. I could do something or I could try to do something. Yeah. And then I kept going to different kind of game jams and 
that's amazing you just so that's got a dream job because i've been mm -hmm. really really passionate jammer and loving game jam like what global game jam is doing so it's it's some sort of like dream come true to work with them now oh that's amazing for those who doesn't know game jam is basically an event where you build your own game so uh it's a in a really good opportunity for anyone to come and who wants to build a game and join the game jam and like make friends have a community right last year we did have the global game jam next so Hyperpad was did the workshop as well and it was really fun and and you know seeing like the people making the games and i hosted my my own little game jam as well here at the universe of waterloo so it was really nice seeing the students kind of making the games and like like you know in the beginning they were like struggling but then you see the outcome and then you're like see you can do it <laughs> and then maybe you start working for the company who knows <laughs> yeah it's game jams can be often like actual way to the games industry because when you are when you participate to a game jam you get that ready product like you uh -huh. have been part of like actually despite no matter that it's made in like 48 hours or uh -huh. and it's short and it can be really simple but you've been part of something like a game project from its start to the end where the like the ready product, playable product is actually out there. So wow. it really it it has impact and it has meaning in your CV. Yeah. I'm I'm curious about the, the mental health uh game event that you're or you're organized or you're part of. Uh, could you tell me more about it? Like I'm, i love mental health, so I'd love to hear yeah. more. <laughs> so, uh, International Game Summit on Mental Health Awareness, it, uh, our website is tigs.ca. Oh. And Mark Gendrew started is it in Toronto, Canada. Oh. Uh, I think it was, I might be horribly wrong. I would want to say it was 2019, but I'm not now 100% sure. But it's been running for some years mm -hmm. and my first time to help mark with that was last year and uh, mark contacted me and asked that or told me that okay i have this event i've been running it combines games industry and mental health uh, what do you think and i instantly told okay i'm in yeah. i guess i want to do it what what do what do you need help with Oh, and okay. mark is an amazing person he has and uh, what what what's the like the best thing of it i think because mark himself he has a bipolar type 2 and yeah. depression and he battles with anxiety and yeah. he he worked in the games industry yeah um, with epic games and such for years but then he had to he had to kind of with that road because of all the mental health issues he has. Wow. But now yeah. he's helping others by running this yeah. event and That's like crazy. offering the space for people like other high-end games industry people to talk about their mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And it's been, I don't know, it's been really, really um, touching and mm -hmm. kind of life-changing for yeah. me to hear those people like being so open yeah and still like seeing mm -hmm. and it has helped so many people a lot of people are like after last autumn's event me and mark mark we got a lot of messages <laughs> from people saying that like thanking for organizing the event and yeah. telling that like telling really personal stories and then the best outcome was that many of them were going to seek for help. Yes, that's so important, so important, because it's building compassion to the community. Like you're building yeah. empathy, you're building compassion, you're, you're doing what you love. So it's like amazing to see that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Like I was going to ask you, the next question is actually similar to this. Like, how do you think the game can influence the next generation? <laughs> 
the game. game. <sighs> yeah, well, I'm also a big fan of educational games. Uh-huh. And we are now with some amazing ladies from, from uh, universities. We are writing a book or like editing a book, actually. Uh, 50, 50 games for equity and justice. Wow. Oh, I, I should like check the title, but the <laughs> final title, but we are on the process of editing it. We have wow. 50 people or 50 games submitted by different, like people from different backgrounds, from different uh, countries. Mm-hmm. And all those games are they have some kind of aspect of um like somehow boosting diversity equity justice Mm -hmm. compassion yes that's beautiful empathy so it's something i really do believe that games can change things because they are so powerful experiences not only educational games yeah. Or like serious games, but all on also those that are purely entertaining. Yeah. Like for example, I love to play like I hate violence, but I love to play shooters. Like ah. I just love all like online multiplayer shooters. Yeah. And I'm really like really bad at them, but I still love them. <laughs> and why I like the best part of it is that um they really like relax my mind. And yeah. I have really cool friends I play them with. Oh. Like it's perfect way to spend time with my friends who are living away. Like living far away from me. Mm-hmm. Nobody else lives here. Like, so, it's it's really good you know. to have a community, you know, like being part of community and that's that's the one good thing about, you know, the game industry and and then yeah. you can see that impact of like kind of like building a supportive system. And I think that even with the pandemic, that two years of like isolation, I think a lot of people start getting into the games and even game development industry. You know, even myself, I got into that during the pandemic and it has been amazing. I never thought that I would ever get into the game industry, you know. So uh, gaming has been growing. It yeah. has been growing during pandemic. Mm-hmm. Streaming as well, movie like uh, movie streaming, serious streaming, but gaming is it has the highest growth mm-hmm. um, from all the like it's so interactive media. Yeah, it, I think it's the mo- most powerful medium of um, storytelling mm-hmm. because you are part of the narrative there, yeah. like you are you are like actor in a movie when you are playing. For sure. And because you sp- like with game, you can spend 100 plus hours with the story and characters and the world that the game has. You watch yeah. a movie, of course, movies are impactful as well, but that's like maybe two hours. You watch it, yeah. of course, there's some teaching that stay with you forever, maybe. Yeah. But then games, you go back and back again. You return to them and you kind of resonate the story because you are one who is part of the decision making there. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it has, it just impacts in so different levels. Yeah. And Definitely. people are now understanding the value of gaming better than before. Yeah, definitely. Like I see, like games now, League of Legends, for example, turning into movies now, kind of thing, and TV shows. Yep. I don't know if you saw the new Netflix show, like from League of Legends. Arcade, Arcade yeah. is really good. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah, and it was so popular instantly when it came to Netflix. Yeah, I was like, couldn't, people love it. People I was like, thanks, thanks. <laughs> yeah, non gamers and people who never like maybe heard of League of Legends before they uh-huh. are loving it. It's amazing. I mean, since you teach kids, like going back to the education things, I really wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think is beneficial about teaching kids to develop a game? Well, all the kind of the skills that are needed in game development are important in other sectors of your life as well. Yeah. Well, that's that's my opinion, my strong opinion. <laughs> but for example. <laughs> Teamwork is one of the, like, that's something I want to highlight always. 
yeah. that when you are developing a game, of course you can be a solo developer, but mostly you are working in a team. And yeah. like how important it is to like, everyone has their own role, but you have to work together. It's something, I know it might be a bit cheesy answer, but it's something <laughs> I really want to like always underline with yeah. the kids I'm teaching. Definitely. And the, yeah, and the thing that they can, like, like for example, today I was talking about, um, I was talking about play testing and game testing, and mm -hmm. it was today's topic, and like the creat creativity you need when you are even play testing, because you have to think of new ways. How could you find a bug that's lurking somewhere in the game, and like it's, there was many kids who were really interested. Like they were never, they had never thought about game testing as a job before. And mm -hmm. I thought it was really cool because um, I believe that game developments, like when you learn game development as a whole, like all the aspects of it, all of them can help you to like get along mm -hmm. better in this life with other people and just like for example doing your taxes yeah when you know how to code you can do certain like processes better and then you might find that you are better in doing some kind of like organized tasks mm -hmm. that require those boring adult tasks yeah we have to do like <laughs> Very boring. Making our taxes, for example, yeah, tax reporting. Just like, but teamwork is the one, one and like, gotta kind of unleashing your creativity and yeah. using your like personal str strengths, what you have in your personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, yeah, it, it's really wide subject. But there's definitely a lot of benefits and of course when you learn like mm -hmm. we can see that there will be a lot of jobs in the games industry yeah. in the future as well mm -hmm. so of course like if you want to just think of like secure carry path games like they are more and more stable carrier yeah. now maybe before yeah. it was like uh, you will never make a living but now you can and we're breaking so many barriers, you know, because like I grew up with people thinking like, oh, if you play games, you're wasting your time, like um, yeah. games is nothing. But now people use games for like um, science, they use games for like school, they use games for like jobs. So it is a bit uh, like, you know, you're breaking that, that barrier, you know what I mean? Because we're going, we're growing. And not only that, you're also providing opportunities for, you know, women to be in the tech industry now and and more representation and then you can see that we can talk about mental health you know what i mean like it's a whole thing it's not just games it's like games is there but like yeah. there's like everything else is there you know what i mean like you can add that to the game you know what i mean so that's a beautiful thing about it i love it <laughs> thank you for yeah that. and it brings to, together like so many different kind of people because we have yeah. always that one common thing that yeah. we love games Mm -hmm. and we love games industry so yeah. there's always this thing that uh, we have in common and we can like kind of return to if we start to feel that we are too different for example and mm -hmm. i've made amazing like maybe the best um, like somehow the best uh, situations have been when people told me like have told me that okay you are the first muslim I'm talking to wow. and it's always kind of really exciting to me <laughs> yeah I feel to, uh, of course I feel a bit pressure as well <laughs> like okay I hope your experience isn't bad <laughs> but and many have told me that yeah, they were they were nervous or they were like a bit like suspicious oh. and someone even told who is like good friend of mine now <sighs> they told me first that like when after we had first talk we had business talk when we first met that uh -huh. was how we met we scheduled a business talk 
and then we ended up being in a games industry gathering like yeah. in one friday hanging out there together and with other people so they told me a bit like later that okay first time when we met they were really worried that we might be like really difficult to deal with because mm -hmm. they had that kind of image of muslims that okay yeah. they are really like strict and difficult and somehow like how she is even in the games industry because she's muslim yeah. and because they never had any kind of interaction mm -hmm. with muslim before and it was funny when they said said that um you are so normal like, I'm surprised you're so normal. Yes, I'm normal. I'm just human being. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> but that kind of things are so cool that we can like really connect with people from so different backgrounds yeah. that we wouldn't otherwise even speak to. Like yeah. ever, never. Like they told me that they wouldn't have wow, like that's... come to speak to me. And now we are good friends. Wow. Yeah, I feel that way too cuz like, you know, grew up growing up as a Baha'i in Brazil and even here everywhere they're like, "Oh, I never met a Baha'i yeah. before." It's like it's like, it's like, "Oh, okay. <laughs> we're not that different, you know. We're still a human being." Yeah, but people yeah, have like, this we all have some kind of bias. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I guess the last question I have for you is kind of a fun question and you know, and guys, whoever is free, feel free to ask questions to, Tar to uh, Taja. And am I saying your name right, Taja? It's Tarja, but you don't have to roll Tarja. the R. Tarja. Ah, but you can, yes. Yeah. Tarja. I forgot that you can yeah. You can do that. It can be difficult. Yeah, because yeah. um, my name is Clarissa, so I know. Ah, <laughs> so, Tarja. Okay. so Tarja, so how would you describe Tarja in three words? You can think about it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Three. Hmm. Oh, that that's tough. Yeah, that's it can be also one. like your game developing journey, like in three words, because it's like you know, it's just a little summary kind of thing. <laughs> if I combine those two, if I I would I would say one is definitely kindness 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 yeah mm -hmm. it's my favorite word in this mm -hmm. whole world Love kindness. Um, um, <laughs> understanding understanding okay and listening listening wow that's beautiful that kind of makes no kindness. sense probably but for me it makes sense <laughs> no, of course. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> and whoever has questions here, uh, do you guys have questions for Tarja? We had a few people saying hi <laughs> on the chat. Um, uh, hi. I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Tarja, for today. I guess uh, no one is asking questions right now, but it was a lovely interview. I hope that this can inspire more women of color out there to be in the game and tech industry. And thank you for sharing and being kind and listening. And like, you know, thanks guys for listening. And thank yes. you for having me. <laughs> yeah, have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.